Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. <coughs> Hello everyone. Uh, today we'd like to talk about uh, God's uh, light, nur, uh, and we are at Nur Spirituality Institute. So maybe uh, today there is uh, <laughs> that kind of uh, <coughs> connection and inner peace. Um, it is kind of the continuation of what we've been <clears throat> talking about last couple of weeks, but I wanted to concentrate on some parts, the relationship between uh, uh, recognizing God's perfection uh, and its impact on our lives. With that, we'll start with an example. So this example that you see here is a projector, uh, well, maybe a cinema movie projector, uh, maybe an old one, or I don't know, <laughs> like an antique one, that's right. So, uh, if there is a dirt on this projector lens, so this here is the lens, what would happen to the screen? It will be dirt. It will be dirt spot. So maybe we can do a, an example. So let's say there is some dirt here. So what happens? If there is dirt, flat. Yeah, we don't see the whole picture. We see some darkness in the picture. So this darkness is in the picture is really related to the lens. So, uh, how about if this projector lens that we had is so these these are some spots here. That, that's uh, the, the spots that you see. So these spots then are really related to the projected lens. This, we need to work on this example. It's very nice. I'll, we will use this metaphor and come back to our, ourselves, of course, and our lives. Uh, <clears throat> dirt. Dirt. Dirt of life. Dirt of life. <laughs> How about if we had some color on the lens. So let's say uh, it's not um, uh, transparent, but it is colored with uh, some uh, yellow. What would we see? We say, what's going on with this movie? And why it's so yellow? And we would be angry at the movie, uh, and angry at maybe the, the movie director. Why would they do a uh, a yellow movie. I mean, this is doesn't make any sense. But if somebody says, "Oh, maybe you put something on the lens," say if we remove what is in front of the lens, which is that yellow screen or yellow, what would you say, like a like, film, like a, like a yeah, uh, on the lens. If you move it, then uh, suddenly you say, "Oh." The movie now is bright. It's, it's again a wonderful movie. So, uh, so it is important to see the relationship between what we see in the movie and what is happening in the lens. Now, very similar to this example, actually, we uh, experience life based on our lens. So if I look at this small dot here and based on what is in this dot our life experience will be uh, will be tinted painted accordingly so when we change our perspective it means when we concentrate on what is happening with the lens then our life experience would change so the change that happens in our perspective proves that everything depends on our lens. For instance, what I'm trying to say, and we'll, we'll work on it, on it is, uh, I don't want to start giving examples from now, but uh, um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so, Uh, 
let's say I had a misunderstanding about something. Okay? And because of that, I'm very angry. So what makes me angry is not the event itself, but my understanding about the event. So the event is already there. Then somebody comes to me and says, you know what? You actually didn't... You are misunderstanding certain things in what happened. What happened was this and this and this and this. So nobody... Still it's the same thing. But suddenly we, our anger goes away. The misunderstanding goes away. And we say, oh, I didn't see it that way. So how we experience life really depends on our perspective. Now, this perspective in the, in the whole experience is really based on our beliefs. Beliefs govern our experience. What I mean by this is this way. Let's say I believe that, I believe that there are uh, uh, zombies outside. Okay? So, I am so afraid to go out. And you tell me, you can go out. I say, no, no, it's dark and they're all there. You know, at, at a certain level, we say, oh, maybe this is something, some issue. So we talk with some doctors, right? We say, maybe there's some, some issues going on with the perspective. However, this is a very extreme point. This is about our belief, right? We believe that it's there. So that's why our experience, our life experience is tinted by it. The same thing, if I uh, 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 saw compassion everywhere, re uh, then my experience of life, every, every explanation that I bring to what is happening in life will be based on that. So really, my belief is what governs my experience. That's why we can be at the same room Experiencing is the same thing. One person saying, it's a great experience. The other person is saying, I hate it. And you're like, what's going on? You say, uh, I don't like it. You know, there wasn't sun today and I don't like it this way. And the other person said, yeah, but there are, you know, we live in Florida. There is sun 80% uh, of the time. Now we are reminded of how, how our sunny days are wonderful. So it's actually time for, for giving thanks. So see, it's actually we're in the same place. Somebody is, at, is angry about it, spending their energy, uh, maybe uh, criticizing it. The other person is uh, uh, getting wisdom from it. But it's the same thing that is happening. So how we interpret it? Okay, I think I'm, I'm making... I'm emphasizing the same point again and again. So, faith in God really affects the lens directly. That's what the point I'm trying to make. The, our knowledge of God and who God is affects this lens directly. How I perceive my Creator. There is a, 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 a saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that goes like, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي I am like my servant expects of me. So the way I know, I approach my creator also, so my knowledge of my creator will affect this lens, how I view life and everything within, in life. This brings us a very important point which, inshallah, God willing, at the end of the, today's workshop together, we will say it's really faith in God is really miraculous. Because unless we recognize that faith in God is miraculous, maybe we don't realize what faith is. Because faith is not just an assumption. It is actually something that changes the lens of my life. Everything in it. It's Transformation, upside down transformation. If that transformation is not occurring, then maybe I am. I need to renew it. I need to reconfirm, think about it. Uh, ha, uh, again, uh, sit with my heart, my inner being, and see if really I am looking at the world 
based on my faith or not. That's why real faith, really, cannot be blind. Because if it is blind, if it's a lip service, then it doesn't have anything to do with the lens. Lens is really my inner world. See, so uh, here is what I mean by inner world. Because it actually, lens is the heart. We'll, I'll work on this example. This is a very true example of our lives. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it, it's exactly how I view it, right? How I view, how, why my viewpoint, my perception, my perception. So this perception that we live life based on this perception, which is really our inner being, which, which, which is called generally in, in Islamic uh, 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 let's say, terminology, it's the heart. When, so when we say heart, or actually I will bring uh, some uh, sayings from the Prophet, inshallah, in the coming uh, uh, slides, but based on our heart, based on my inner being, I experience life. So the first question that I want to pose, and we want to get the answer, inshallah, at the end today, is, is faith faith in God, I mean, miraculously transforming my life experience. Do I really feel that, you know, I am so thankful for the grace of faith that God has granted me, that if I wasn't, I didn't have that faith in God in my heart, I don't know what would have happened with my life. If, if I'm not able to say this very often, openly and I'm not running away from any possibility that takes this faith away in my heart then maybe I'm not realizing I am not realizing how miraculous is this faith how transforming it is in my heart okay so now I want to Work. So this was more an introduction, inshallah, uh, and uh, inshallah we'll, we'll work all together. Uh, so uh, I want to work on this example, what I mean by it, because you might have seen it seen and say, you know, what is this? What is this point? What is that screen? So uh, <clears throat> life is happening here. We view life based on our hearts, based on our inner being. And our inner being has the connection with the infinite, who is God. So, through our connection with our Creator, we either see life, we either see life as God meant it to be, which the only way to do that is to make this heart as transparent as possible. That's what we call purification of the heart. So that nothing in my heart, nothing in my lens, tints or makes any dirt in my experience. So that whatever the merciful, compassionate, loving creator has actually said is reflected exactly as it is. But what we do is sometimes we put dirt in our heart. So, this dirt in our heart, which is our inner being, this perception, which we will talk about today, is what makes us see this dirt. So that when we talk about life, we say, ah, I mean, this is a merciless world. We are actually echoing how our heart sees it. Because at the same place, a person having the same exact experience might be saying, this is a world full of mercy. So now, who is saying, who, who, who is, uh, who is seeing, you know, it's a, we are seeing the exam, say, same exact thing, 
but we have two different experiences. This lens that we have is changing our experience. Our experience is either reflecting what it is, which is God is the compassionate creator, and everything that he creates is full of compassion. Or, I don't see that. So, now, let me go step by step. When we say, Allah who knows the will art, God is the light of the heavens and the earth. That's a verse in the Quran. So, this light is an infinite light that brings light everywhere. So, by definition, if this light is pure, infinite light, it means there is nowhere in creation where this light is not. There is nowhere in creation where this light is not shining on. By definition. Otherwise, this light is not eternal. This light is not infinite. This light means this light is limited. But if we're saying it is an unlimited creator, that, and he is the light of the heavens, heavens and the earth, then it means that what we are really saying that God is reflecting his divine qualities every moment in a unique way everywhere in creation. Everywhere in creation is nothing but the act of God. The act of God. So wherever I look, it's really there is one real true actor. That is the meaning of Tawheed, unity of God. That is the meaning of oneness of God. That God is the only creator. There is no one else that creates any, nothing. No, no one can create anything in this life. And this creator is doing every action in reality. So, if he is doing every action, and he is pure light, it means he encompasses everything. This light does not discriminate between the weak and the strong, the sick and the... Uh, uh, the healthy, the uh, night and the day. It is the creator of it. By definition, it's encompassing it. What do we call this encompassing? By definition, we call it boundless compassion. We call it Rahma, right? Rahma is a very strong word. It's a very strong word that has the same root. We talk about this a lot, but we need to remind ourselves. It is exactly the same root with the womb of, that takes care of a baby. So it means like the baby is being taken care of within this womb completely, 100%. It means nothing in creation, by definition, can be out of this womb, which is a symbolic womb, the mercy of the Creator. The mercy of the Creator, the compassion, the love of the Creator. So, uh, so this embracing, and the, there are many verses in the Quran that speaks to this. For instance, my grace or rahma here. So my love, my compassion, whichever word you want to use, because it's all of them at the same time, overspreads everything. Kulli lashay, wasiat kulli lashay. Not some things. Kulla. Yeah, everything. It overspreads everything. My, or in another verse, O oh, our sustainer, you embrace all things within your grace. So everything is within this embrace, embrace, embracing of the Creator. So when we use the word good or bad, when we categorize Yes. Is everywhere. Well, yes. So. Yes, let's put my hand on the projector so make it a. Yeah? That's how you see that. There's a spot in your heart. Yes. Yes. So then when I say, I say, well, there is no mercy in my life. I don't experience it. Where is the problem? Take your hand out of it. The problem is in your perception. It's not in the reality. And 
and the proof to it, because the proof is very important. Proof, how can we confirm it? When we change our perspective, our experience changes. When we stop covering up. When we surrender to the light and accept that God knows even uh, the verse is coming here. Uh, I, I know I am getting excited to this, but I want to show that verse first. Uh, and I'll come back. Uh, <clears throat> so perhaps, perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And God knows <coughs> while you know not. So then... When I say, this is bad, this can't happen, there is darkness here. The verse reminds me and says, maybe there isn't. Maybe the problem is in your perception and you think that there is darkness. And most of the time, we learn that our perception was wrong after some time, you say, you know, 10 years ago, I was so unhappy because this, this, and this happened to me. But now I realize how merciful my creator was when he actually gave me that difficulty, gave me that problem, gave me that issue. So instead of waiting 10 years to recognize it, today our, 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 our prayer, our prayer is, can we recognize this now? So let's put it on the table. What do I have in my experience that is making my life, making me want to, want to be suicidal, make me uh, see no hope in life, make me uh, uh, don't have any excitement of waking up in the morning, uh, uh, complain all the time. What else? Can we increase, increase these? So what is it? What, all these, let's put it on the table. And then, let's see if we change our perspective. Not the things, because what I'm trying to, to, to so this is the example. What I'm trying to say is that what is happening is happening, but I am thinking it or, or, or not. So what I'm saying is, it's not about whether I have the two thousand dollars, or twenty thousand, or two million in the bank, or not, or whether I have a new friend, a new spouse, a better child, or not. What I'm trying to say is, let everything be as it is. And if you change your perspective regarding life, does your experience of life change accordingly? That doesn't mean let's not change anything, because actually, when the perspective changes and we see the compassion, we will have a better realization of what we need to do to always keep it that way. To always, uh, we will make better choices. I'm not saying let's not change anything in life. What I'm, saying, what I'm saying is that this moment, I can see it in two different perspectives. It's a clarifying question. You're also not meaning the glasses have full health and Glasses have full, but both the full side and the empty side are 100% mercy. What I'm saying is the glass is 100% full of mercy. Yes. My experience might have difficulties, but it is full of light of the Creator. I am the one that is not seeing the light of God. If I see it, even my difficulties will pass. I will actually gain from them. I will gain wisdom. I will learn through them. Because and th this is such a different uh, approach or solution or explanation of reality because that glass is half full, let's see the full side approach which people use. It doesn't, it's not a solution because my ego or me, I always wanted to be 100% full. Whatever you tell me to play Pollyanna and to, to say, oh, get the full side, get the full side, I'll always say, but what about the, you know, if, if, it's a, if it's still an ego based approach, let your ego be fulfilled with the half full glass, right? That's what you're saying, basically. Yes, and you're putting, you're, you're, you're basically. Shoving it under the 
shoving it under the carpet, it doesn't change your experience because it's still there. So the only way is to recognize that it is not darkness, actually. It, yes, Paulette, you wanted to say? It just brought to me an example of last time I was talking to my daughter, and she's always had a lot of problems with anxiety. It's been a major problem. And she said, you know, I've come to realize that my anxiety, she says, is a blessing from God. Because she says, I realize that it is because of this anxiety has really brought me closer to God. Superman. And, you know, we're talking about it, and I said, oh, I said, you know, and she said how, you know, it has, you know, opened her up to more compassion and, and you know, it, it was just amazing. And so I thought when you were giving it's, this, that was, thank you, that's, and, yeah. I think the answer to the question you were asking, why, why, do, we, why do we resort to all these things, is because we have, we have certain expectations or certain ambitions, and so when there's a gap between where we are versus where we want to be or expect it to be, or you know, think we should be, mm -hmm. I mean, that's where you, know, you start to, mm -hmm. to wonder, well, maybe I did something wrong, or maybe mm -hmm. I should try to fix it, or maybe, you know, that's where the doubts come from, and the, and the complaints come from. So, how, how do you turn that off without turning off your, you know, because cause Allah also puts in us ambition so that we go out to accomplish certain things, mm -hmm. but then when we aren't able to, then that's when, you know, the complaining starts. So, how do you balance those two between appreciating that, you know, fire that Allah puts with us so that we can go out and, mm -hmm. and do the great things we do, Versus, you know, telling yourself, okay, if I can't do that, you know, it's okay, I'm not going to complain about it, you know, I'm going to be okay with where I am. Yeah, that's a great uh, question. Thank you. Uh, uh, one thing is, is that, <clears throat> okay, let's see. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, this is a uh, thank you uh, to, to you and to God for allowing you to do it. So, now, uh, let's do, uh, do an example here. So, we have expectations, and we are so uh, agitated why we are not reaching to our expectations. What I'm saying is that, for one moment, and this is my view, so this is, uh, I see life like this way. So, so, what I'm saying is, Maybe for one moment, drop everything. Drop everything and come back to God. That God, you are the creator of this moment, you are the creator of everything. I surrender to you everything. I don't, I don't have any expectation. If you want to take my life now, I'm okay. I am just, whatever, I am your servant. I am realizing this. I am realizing that you are in control. So we do this connection. It means we realize the pure light, that God is the light. We are actually, we can't change, I mean, we, we think we can do many things, but we can't in reality. After we do this connection, then we look back at our life, we say, okay, now, according to this reality, what can I do in life? What can I do? Now, my expectations might be exactly the same, or they might change, because I might realize that according to the view that God is under control, not me, some of my expectations might change, and I might have peace with certain things that happened in my life that I had this turmoil. For instance, let's say, I really wanted to be a pilot, okay? And this has been in my, in my heart for a long time, and because of that, I can't really uh, 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 feel peace in my work as a professor, because I'm, I, I shouldn't be, every day I, I wake up, I look at the sky and I see these uh, carriers, aircrafts, and I'm like, oh, I wish I was the pilot. Why I can't be a pilot? Maybe I can. Maybe, or, and then I, I daydream, I daydream about it, and then I go to my work, I'm a professor, and I'm like, oh, what, is, what kind of job is this? I want to be a pilot. So, so maybe I need to stop a little bit. <laughs> maybe I need to stop a little bit and say, well, it happened that I couldn't be a pilot, okay? Now, first I need to connect with my God, with my Creator. God is under control. Everything that happened, happens for a purpose. 
But God, I am surrendering to you. Whatever. And now, let's look back. Maybe I need to stop everything and go and study. Go and become a pilot. But maybe, maybe actually what I am in now is great. Maybe it is, wow, I am a university professor. Why, why did I, I think about it? Oh, I can do many things. Actually, actually there are so many opportunities in front of me that I haven't been seeing because, because I wasn't actually looking. Because I, I was putting this tint on my window, so, uh, on my uh, view, on my perspective. So every day, maybe God was telling me, you know, maybe you're not a pilot, but you can change many things in the world. But I wasn't in tune with it. So this connection suddenly might open many venues. And it might be, as I said, also deciding to go to study uh, and be a pilot too. So, so okay, maybe I... Uh, me, is it? No, thank you very much. This is a very, very uh, uh, good uh, question. Um, <clears throat> so let's say we are driving, okay? And suddenly, there is a traffic jam. So within this traffic jam, we, our expectation was to reach to where we wanted to reach in 10 minutes. But now there is a traffic jam because there is an accident or whatever. And I realized there is no way I can be there in 10 minutes. I can be there in one hour. Or maybe two, I don't know. So there's two ways. One, to die from a heart attack in the car because I am so angry why there is a traffic jam. And then because of this, I am so... Uh, or, or, wow, I have 50 more minutes uh, maybe uh, I can use this time to talk to my nephew who I didn't talk for a long time. Uh, maybe we can chat with, uh, maybe this my spouse, uh, instead of saying, you know, why are we late? Maybe we can renew our love. Or maybe, uh, <laughs> or, or, or maybe we can... <laughs> resolve. <laughs> resolve or maybe we can say, actually I had a, a CD I wanted to listen, you know, it was a wonderful lecture. This will give me this opportunity. Or maybe we can say, well, you know what? I can actually park. Uh, there is a, a, just a gas station here. And you know what? We stop at the gas station and we meet with our friend that we didn't see for 10 years who actually maybe offers us a job. And we're like, subhanAllah, I, maybe that was a, an interview that I was going to. So suddenly we're like, wow, I am offered a dream job because I met my friend today in the gas station and I wasn't expected to be in the gas station. What I'm trying to say is not to lower any expectations. We're not lowering. We are making peace with what is happening because we are always sure that our Creator will always give us the best. And the best is not always what we think the best because we don't know what is happening. We didn't know that our friend was in the gas station. We didn't know that maybe it would have been a very bad job if I, if I got that job. And my Creator who is merciful doesn't want me to do it. Maybe my expectations actually will make me miserable. And, uh, and the merciful creator is doing what he does because he is the loving, merciful creator to stop me from these expectations, to lead me to what I need to go to. So what I'm trying to say, if I realize that 
My Creator is compassionate. My Creator is always loving. He is not uh, stopping certain things from happening because he is ang he's angry at me or he is now not my Creator anymore or because he doesn't love me anymore. No, because he loves me, what he does is happening. Because he is full of mercy. Mercy overspreads everything. Mercy was the reason that was traffic jam. Mercy is the reason certain things I wanted in life didn't happen and now where I am is where I am. So when I make peace with that, then with mercy I walk. So whatever happens in life, it happens with mercy. It's not lowering expectations. Actually, my expectation becomes 100% compassion, 100% mercy. Wherever I turn, mercy. I wanted to do this, no, maybe, but God, I know that you are leading me to where I need to go. So maybe my prayer should change. Instead of saying, God, I want it exactly like this, to God, lead me to your pleasure, to where your rhythm is, where your pleasure is. Lead me and let me want it. Let, my, let me see things as they are. See the reality of things as they really are, that you are always full of mercy. So, uh, 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 Sister Amanda, do you want to, you wanted to say something in between? Or? Yes, I was just saying, in our expectation, becomes like our habit. We make our habit is to be based on a dream we have or something. Uh, we have to look behind that. First of all, we have, again, it could be our happiness in other <coughs> things that we have no knowledge of. Uh, that's one aspect of it. The other aspect, I think, is to also know why you're desiring something. Like, are you desiring that thing for, for itself, for, for the world, for the material world, or, or you look deeper of what you are really seeking. You are really seeking the divine attributes. You are seeking to be their servant. That's what will fulfill you. You are seeking to come nearer to your Lord through uh, becoming the representative of this quality. So you need to look why you are desiring something. What is What makes it appealing to you? There is a quality in it that makes it appealing to you. So if this quality comes through a different route, this type of quality, it, it could be also satisfying and more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. first, we don't make the dream, just a worldly dream and make it our idol, uh, that we worship and our happiness, our salvation depends on it. And the second aspect is to look why I'm desiring this dream. What are the qualities within me uh, that, or God wants to me to know about these qualities through that thing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, when we refer to the verse on the glasses on the lens, um, uh, we, we see a, a multitude of verses, not one in fact, one, one more of verses. It's a bunch of, of points in front of us. Our different, you know, um, this can also represent a different, you know, um, aspects of life of a person. Uh, one also has to recognize, you know, as the sister just said, the uh, main desire that we have is actually originated from one of the side of our life. Whether it's a generous person, a presumption, some. You know, so many uh, aspects of life that come to that, you know, on logics of the best of the best. And uh, there is a necessity uh, and need to clear us from those desires born from out of nowhere. And one has also to be conscious of what he's looking for. Uh, not based on what the neighborhood you know, has or my friends, but based on who you are. And uh, in conjunctions with your 
obedience and your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, given the fact all these attributes you know, belong to him and not to you. Mm -hmm. And so for that purpose, you know, um, a work of this verse may come good as well as bad. It depends on how you originated, where your desire comes from. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of the perceptions, as you insisted on that, also that can come from that verse. But also being presumptuous about your life and desire is also a, a tremendous barrier between you and, and the Creator. Because being that, I mean, you can really perceive anything. There's a perception before with a, at least a minimum of understanding. And if you don't have that minimum of understanding, there is no way you can perceive anything. Mm -hmm. So then you kind of back up to, to the light and mm -hmm. not really move forward to that. Yeah, and that's surrender. Yeah, surrender exactly. That's surrender. Yeah, we talk about Islam, right? Islam means surrender. So basically we are surrendering. We are recognizing that the infinite light, Noor, the, nur, the, the, the infinite source of knowledge, the infinite mercy is there, and we surrender to 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 Him. So, uh, so Bismillah then becomes the DNA of existence, which is actually really the DNA of existence, but it becomes my experience as well. Why are we taught to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim when we start? eating, when we start driving, before we start our work, before we do whatever. Because we are reminding ourselves. We are reminding ourselves what is. Let my lens get the light of the Creator who is the compassionate and gracious and merciful. Pass through. Whatever is happening, my intention is to do it in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. I want to receive it this way, I want to behave this way, I want to recognize life this way. Because life is really this way. Life is. There is no point in life that is, there is no mercy. Mer I, it is, sometimes I feel I am out of it. And that is my experience. Then I experience what we call hell. Hell in my heart. Or hell forever, right? Because because I am the one who is uh, uh, shutting the 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 lens in a way. Y yes, Anne. Uh, isn't this the very definition of surrender? Because surrender is not just giving up your life, but it's also in So we either practically are living uh, in paradise, within our heart, I mean, which is the lens letting, seeing the mercy of the Creator, or we are covering up, practically speaking, every moment. So my lens affects how much I perceive this light, really. And God says, in the earth are signs for those who comprehend, and within yourselves do you not see. So if I contemplate on it, I realize that actually this light of the Creator everywhere is a sign that show Him, that show this light, show His mercy, show His compassion. And when we let this light pass through us, when we make peace that we are not the source, but we actually surrender to the light, surrender to the light, then our life experience becomes seeing the reflection of the divine qualities. What do I mean by this? Something difficult happens in life, you say, God, you are the merciful. You become sick, God, you are the healer. There is some difficulty, God, you are the patient. Give me patience. Let your light 
go through my life. That's what we say. Give me patience, what does it mean? Let your divine quality of patience, let me recognize it, because it's there. But I don't recognize it sometimes. That's why I am, so let me see it, let me recognize it. Let me recognize your divine qualities everywhere. So, when I recognize it then, as much as this heart, this lens, becomes pure, what does it pure means? Surrender all the attachments to the things other than the light, other than the infinite compassionate. It, do I want infinite compassionate, or do I want becoming a pilot, let's say, in that example? No, no I, I don't care about infant compassion at this moment. I want to be a pilot. Well, if that is really my, my, uh, my uh, perception, then what I'm doing, I'm just uh, imagining. It's an illusion. Life is going on. Life is already there. I am the one who doesn't want to see it. So open your eyes. When you open your eyes and you let go and you say, I want to just live to be the servant of the light, the servant of the light of the heavens and the earth. Whatever you want, do in my life, my creator. Because I know that whatever you do, it will be full of compassion. So let me see your compassion. I am surrendering to it. Give me power means reflect on me your divine reflection, your divine quality of power to work, to see your compassion everywhere. To live my life, to always let this compassion run in my life. See, so now what we're doing, we are changing. What is my expectation? My expectation is God 100% in my heart. So then, what is, what is su success in life? Is it how many diplomas I put on the wall? or how much I experienced the mercy of the Creator. So that is the difference. And sometimes you experience the mercy of the Creator with all these diplomas too. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's, there is no dichotomy between life and then uh, uh, devoting your life to God. No! Life is where we devote our life to God, but according to God's uh, plan, according to God's, uh, He is running the show, right? So, God, where do you want me to be in the show? He's the pilot. But, but sometimes, you know, you see, sometimes I, when we talk my, my daughter, she wants to play a certain part in the show, and then when we tell her, no, no, let's say today's show, she wants to go to an amusement park. Well, today in the show, we are going somewhere else. So she has two options. She either can cry all, night, all day, or she can say, Daddy, you know, I really wanted to go to the amusement park, but I want to have fun with going to our friends. And we can go to the amusement park some other time. Or, no, 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 no. What happens then? She, she won't even get, won't be happy in her friend's house that, that she would normally actually enjoy, but because of her perception, because she clothed herself, and she just say, either in music park or nothing. Nothing becomes the option. The, the, and this is how, what will happen in our life. Something happens, I am suicidal. Like, why, why are you suicidal? Because life is not happening according to what, not to what I want it to be. See? Do you see? Well, in the first place, it's not your life. God is giving you the life. It's a trust, right? So enjoy the trust and recognize it. How can you enjoy the trust when you ain't got no money, you ain't got no car, you ain't got no gas, you ain't got no nothing? <laughs> How? You got a beautiful life. You, you have life. You, you have life itself. You can enjoy it. You can you can enjoy because when we see, I'll give you examples from many people, right, in the history we see, but we'll come to our life. But let's talk about some 
scholars, we, we call them scholars today and we want to, they are our examples because they were thrown into prisons, they had no nothing and they were more joyful than a person who is outside walking. Or, you know, uh, you see the prophets, some of them are executed, are killed, killed, butchered, butchered, you know. It, uh, some of them, their kids die. They are persecuted by their uh, surroundings. And yet, in their heart, they're living a life of joy. So, so we are no different. If they can be joyful, it means there's something to be joyful about. And it is to recognize that, actually, I have no money in my pocket, maybe. <sighs> wow, that's great. I can walk around and I can enjoy the day. The parks are free. I'm not saying let's go to the park. What I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, it's all a perception. It's all a perception. Sometimes you can have millions of dollars and you are suicidal. You know, look at the, uh, what is happening with the people that have everything. Uh, look, look at what's happening in the Hollywood stars. Why are they, why do they want to use drugs? Why do they want to commit suicide? And they have everything that you say, I am building my expectation on. So maybe what you want is, as Sister Anna said, wonderful. You want to feel rich. Well, God, the light, is God the rich. And he is manifesting his attribute of the rich everything is in you know one, one time there was a teacher that we used to go to his class about, and he said you know I enjoy all the parks actually even he didn't he didn't have money, much money I would say and every house I see I actually enjoy it I see wow God this is your creation that's wonderful and I go home and say, God, thank you for creating all these wonders. So see, he feels everything is his already. You look at the trees, you look at the sky, you, you own the skies. In reality, you meaning you as the servant of God, God has given you the skies for you to reflect. The skies are yours to reflect. The whole creation is yours to reflect. So, so richness then of the Creator becomes the light of God that, that comes through me. And sometimes this realizes that better pocket, sometimes, no, it depends, you know, maybe that's my, that's the mercy that God knows that maybe if I had that pocket, I would, I would be miserable. So he's telling me, you know, your happiness is actually in this circle. Try to find it there. And then once you find it, if you want to change it, you can try. But if it's not happening, whatever is happening is full of compassion. Can we find it? That is the question. In now, now is full of compassion. Not tomorrow. I had a friend that used to tell me all the time, how are you? <sighs> Alhamdulillah, but everything will be better. And I used to think this is a great statement. Then I realized actually, it's not a great statement at all. Because you are, we are always, thinking it will be better tomorrow and everything is not good today. So what is good about it? We, it's actually miserable. It's a depressed life. It will be better. So it is not good today. No, it is good now. It is good now. Can't we enjoy what we have? That is, if we enjoy what we have, as, as there is a saying of Prophet Muhammad, he says, Man, whoever thank, cannot thank for the little, cannot thank for the more. And what we have for the little? We don't have little. We have eyes to see, mind to think about, to think with. We have so many things. It's not little. It's too much. <laughs> but but uh, it's... Uh, uh, yes, Brother Munir, I need to stop. Yeah. Sir? Yes. I used to tell somebody, I go to the church, the church one day, I think this guy not speaking English, you know, I this country. You know, have a car. So we, we can't find the job for him. We can give you a take a bus. That's mean you're not gonna need the car. And then other situation, if you have a face, it means good face. And you understand because the money sometimes you make you travel. Like for me, I find this couple of years ago. See see subhanallah, I try to do it right, I try to do it left. 
And I realized maybe that this is right because the God, when he gives you something good, is good for you. When he gives you something bad, this is better for you. Like it's a Allahu Akbar. Yes. Right. And uh, like I say, Francis, if you give me money while ago, I'm going to do it haram. Exactly. Why? Because this money was the poor of when I when the value will give it to me is not enough. I have to go over some money with Haram to do some business. And like they say, you know that is a power and you have to, if you have a good face, you gotta think in what they have that thinking or a lot of people sometimes do not watch what's going on in the news, what is going on in the world. In many years, 10, 15, 20 years ago, say family. Family in different beliefs in the world is not the too cheap they live with one dollar. Yesterday I see something in Egypt about the people living in a chat. See, five people they live in one room, one room. If you're thinking about that and see that this, nothing needs some money, but that's the rules. We are here spoiling, we need this, we need that, we need that. But if you're thinking, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. That is it. Alhamdulillah. Every moment. Uh, yeah. I just have a couple of comments uh, that, you know, like, uh, is that we, we usually think that what really satisfies us, like, you watch on TV, for example, about the typhoon and what happened in uh, Manila. Uh, and there was this program about how they were still laughing, able to laugh. It's really very inspiring. I think because the difficulty brings people closer and they feel the intimacy, the mercy, which is divine. So they feel a love presence where probably if they had the regular richness and life, they might walk away from each other. They don't experience the and the mercy. As when it comes to the hardship, you know, someone sick might actually receive a lot of love that he might not have received other way. So, it, and that becomes more fulfilling. That becomes more, you know, uh, you experience life to the depth. The other comment that I want to mention, which has to do with Arish comment, we will always feel lack of something, we'll always feel in need because we are not God and because creation is a motion, is an expression that has to be brought to existence. So it is God who is also creating within us desires or but we don't understand the meaning of these desires and we don't know how to fulfill it in a, in a right way that connect us to the everlasting, which is the mercy, the love, the patience, the endurance, and the, all of the beautiful qualities that exist in the soul in spite of the body. <coughs> so this spiritual aspect is what will fulfill us more. And sometimes the hardship brings it more. SubhanAllah. So things, in a way then, things, Cannot, can never fulfill us. Because what we are looking for is eternal meanings, eternal qualities of the divine. When we find it, when we find it, and we can, in our heart, we are given that, that ability to know experientially the creator who is infinite. Then, as uh, uh, Sayyid Nursi Rahimallah says, uh, I reminded you reminded me who who ever finds God finds everything and whoever loses God loses everything because when I find God I find the source of everything I am the all the source of all love is him whatever wherever love I see I start to realize this is the reflection of the light that is passing through my heart this is this is the creator that is my creator and his creator and her creator and we're all family. This is all God's. You start to feel this, uh, this is real. We start to feel everything is almost uh, familiar because everything is God's creation. And we are God's creation who is enabled to 
No, the eternal one, the, cre the, 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 the creator. What are what you doing? Way. Exactly. What are you doing with your trust? And when, we, when this happens, when we see God's compassion, love, beauty, wisdom everywhere, then we are realizing the verse that says, wherever you turn, there is the face of God. I turn to a difficulty. I say, God, you are the merciful. You are the compassionate. It's not the... I start to see the attributes of the divine, they see meaning in my heart to be uh, cognizant of, to be reminded of. Everything in creation starts to remind me of the uh, eternal one that is making himself known through everything in creation. Yes. Then, uh, thank you, that's a great point. Then you reminded me of You won't be able, cannot guide whoever you like. But God is the guide and he guides whoever he wants. So we need to surrender to this reality, right? Okay, so it means that I want things to be better. So guidance, let's take it in a general sense. That I want everything to be straight. You know, everything to be full of mercy. But certain people are not choosing mercy. So then you say, God, my prayer. You, you, my prayer is reminding me of your mercy. You are the merciful and I am praying to you because I have no way, nowhere else to go. But I know that you are the most merciful and you know. You are the one who guides whoever he wants. So what does this bring to us? It brings to us peace. Because it brings to us surrendering to God's decree. God is the pilot of our life, of everything in creation. In another verse, God, God says to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be in close translation, you seem like you're, you're almost going to die. Uh, uh, to, uh, can you remind me? Huh. How can we translate it? Yeah, like, it's going to break your heart because you cannot guide people. Because Allah is the guide. And in a way, again, we are seeing things from the outer picture and we judge things like that. It doesn't mean we don't try to give advice to each other, but it means sometimes Allah let a person commit the, what we call sin or wrong doing because it teaches them, it humbles them, and instead of they become arrogant, like scholars sometimes say, someone who's committing sin and feeling ashamed before God, between him and God, could be in a higher status than someone who's doing so good and he is self-righteous and arrogant in the eyes of God. So there is this inner special dimension that we don't know fully, so, we try our best, we make our prayer, we ask for guidance, we pursue what we need most likely is our place to do, but then we surrender the result to Allah, and that is the peace that Omar is trying to, to tell us about. So we trust, we trust in God's, that God wouldn't 
God works in mysterious ways, right? And they have their own past. So God, whatever past they have, I trust that you are the compassionate. See, now we actually, the problem we had was that, was that we didn't see the compassion in their situation. But now we are reminding ourselves that it was my, the problem in my lens. I didn't see the compassion. That's why I saw that certain people are devoid of God's compassion. No, God is the all merciful. Would God leave any of his creation? Yeah, but they are doing bad things. Well, maybe they are going as in a mysterious way, in a wise. God is the Hakim, is the wise. And I know that. I know that. So you have peace now. You are letting God be God. And you, you will not. Your part, but yes. The rest is a lot. Exactly. And, and, and doing our part is really nothing but recognizing we are servants of the compassionate. So we'll pray for the person, we'll do whatever we can for the person, and we will recognize that it's not us that is doing it. It is God that is using us to do these prayers or to help this person. See? So, so again, we are emptying and, and letting God. It's surrendering uh, uh, in our lens, making our lens as transparent as possible. The goal is to have spiritual poverty. It means no qualities or or that I attach myself to only God. I, am, I just want to be the servant of God. Whatever God brings, I am trusting. Complete surrender to God's decree. So, so in a way, then, this heart is really the place that changes everything. And here I wanted to bring this, this uh, uh, saying, with, which we studied several weeks ago, that there is this morsel in the body that if it is sound, everything will be sound. If it's not, everything will be diseased. So this is the heart. It's exact. So, so we can use it here. So our heart, our heart, if we purify it, if it is sound, then everything is sound. Then our experience becomes like this experience. Uh, uh, wondrous is the affair of the believer. For it is good for him in every matter. If my heart is sound, it is good in every matter. Something happens, and how do it happen? But it's difficult to oh, God, help us. See, everything is a prayer. So it's a very interesting, very interesting experience in life we're talking about. Wondrous is the affair of the believer, for it is good for him in every matter. I want to concentrate here. And this is not the case with anyone except the believer. Why? Because the believer is the one. That's why faith is miraculous. I want to come to the first question I asked. The believer is the one who recognizing, recognizes the compassion of God in everything. That's miracle. It's miracle. Some people will say you are crazy. How can you are peaceful in this event? You say, God is the green. Well, then faith is doing its job. That's that's miracle. So, uh, coming uh, uh, back then, we want to be very practical, uh, uh, very practical. And I want to use two things here, is whenever I see lack of compassion in my experience, I need to make the intention that God remind me, whenever I see lack of compassion, to come back to you and ask for forgiveness. Because the issue, the issue is my perception. The problem is my perception. That is the meaning of subhanallah. Subhanallah means God, you are perfect. You are free from all defects and God is the creator of everything. If I see a defect somewhere, it means God was unable to make it perfect. So when I see a defect, I say, God, subhanAllah, it is my perception that is seeing the defect. Help me to see the wisdom. Help me to see your perfect wisdom, perfect mercy in whatever is happening. I can't see it without your help. 
because when I looked at it, I just saw, I said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. God is perfect. So, this very practical solution, we can confirm. This very practical solution. Because when we change our perception, that thing start, stops to bother us. We start to see the compassion in it. It means it's confirmed. What is confirmed? This solution is confirmed. That when I change the perception, my experience changes. My experience of life changes, and I s realize that my life experience really depends on my perception. If I have a black heart, whatever you give to, give to me, I will not be thankful to you. Right? Sometimes we have some colleagues or some friends. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I, we are very good friends, I, and I've been very good with this person, but they always <coughs> look at the negative side. Well, because that's how, the, how they approach everything. That's about the heart. Where they, but you have another friend. They are so thankful, so happy. And I don't do much to them. I mean, so I don't worry about even uh, trying to make them happy because they are easy to, <laughs> to be friends, right? So, so why? Because the perception. The perception. A person who sees the good in things has good thoughts. And he who has good thoughts receives pleasure from life. This is really the summary, right? The summary that a person whose perception is always to see the mercy in things. To recognize, not the mercy, to recognize that everything is a manifestation of the mercy of the Creator. His life is a, a life of pleasure. Yes? Uh, I think the difficulty sometimes is how change your perception. I mean, that's not an easy thing. Yes. So practical... I mean, what happens if you change your perception? You have it up there on that slide. Pra How does somebody change their perception? I think it's a continuous thing. I think we always think that it's just a state of mind and once we reach it, we're going to stay there. But I think it's, it has to really continuous. Like you have to keep refreshing, you know, your mind to kind of stay there. Because as situations get thrown at you, you do tend to sink, you know, yes. and, and you think, oh, well, why am I here? Well, I didn't refresh, you know. It's mm -hmm. not just the state you get to, and aha, uh -huh, and then you're there forever. You're going to keep having to remind yourself to get back. And that's being a servant. So it's to be conscious, conscious servant, basically. So it, it, it requires a conscious uh, a, a ability. But we'll talk about the practical steps. Yes, brother. Uh, what elements in your, in your expose that I'd like to add so that people, including myself, to better understanding is a very complex um, term that you what is to you know, and I'm going to require a lot of time to digest it. But also one has to remember, man has to remember this this earth has to go one day. And every day is going, part of it is going. And we are a traveler. And constant traveler, we never stop. And all the commodity, whether it's food, the drinks, clothes, or, uh, beautiful house, is the commodity to travel. If we take back, you know, this and we say, let's say you today I'm going on vacations from Florida to Texas. What we do, we make preparations. We book the airplane, or we book a car, or we take clothes, or we get pocket money to put on the way. We we prepare the trial. It's the same thing that Allah provided us. It gives us the commodity to make that travel easy for us. And in fact, we never stop. That's why we get we all we get old, and that travel continues until we reach a destination. This stuff is not a destination. It's not even a transit. Mm -hmm. So we pass by and we have to reach the destination, which is not the earth, but to me that created. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, everything that we will surrounded that is a commodity to make the travel easy. Mm -hmm. So one should not be attached to those because they have to go. Once you, you, you reach a, a one, one part and the traveling, this needs goes back. The eat, the kids who eat, you know, a sovereign, or what, the six feet or what, how do they first sell it on sovereign? It's not the man that's going to be that sovereign tomorrow. 
because it doesn't mean it alone. It passed by this this uh, this uh, this point of life. You know? Yes. And uh, until you reach another point, you no longer you know, think about food. You no longer think about money. You no yes. longer think about it. and your happiness did not depend on that. Yes. Earth depend from the creator and not the the, 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 the reverse. So therefore, even the earth has been providing, if Allah doesn't command the earth to grow, you know, the, the, the corn, the flower, the candy, and I mean, so. Yes. So how we expect to be happy in this earth? If we don't know that we are traveling, right? Yes. If we know we are traveling, we, our expectations and everything is according to the, the, the traveling. Yes. So here I want to go practical steps. So practical, because I want to bring uh, uh, the practical aspect of faith. So let's say we feel darkness and negative emotions. You know what I will say? I feel negative emotions. Let's say, say Alhamdulillah. This is a moment that I can use. God is sending me to for a, a moment that I can reconnect back to God. How do we do that? We felt that darkness. We say, God, help me see the compassion. Now, how do we say this? We beg God. We surrender to God. Sometimes our tears come. We say, God, help me see your grace. Without your grace, because I know it's there, help me change. Help me realize it. You spend the time as much as it's, sometimes that time is 10 seconds. Sometimes it takes you two days. And you're gloomy at these two days. But what are you doing? You are recharging. You are reading prayer books, uh, thinking, God, you are the compassion to help me make this change. It's a prayerful time. So we immediately, what we are doing basically, we are immediately saying, God, help me see. Help me recognize again and again, again and again and again and again, that you are subhan that you are free from all defects. Whatever you create is full of light, full of wisdom, although I might not see it. Help me have peace with it. Have me recognize the mercy in it. See, so everything is really happening in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Help me see it. Help me see it. What are we doing here? This is a practical faith. Because I am now asking, when we do this, don't we have a change of heart? Sometimes it takes 10 seconds, sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes a couple days. But who is changing our heart? And who is telling us, actually, I love to hear you needing grace. Actually, these blemishes are nothing but a reminder again that God, I am, I know that you are the light. And I feel these blemishes, they are reminding me again and again that without you, I cannot live. I need you, don't leave me. You are the light. I need you. See, we are building our attachment to the infinite creator. We are telling God, God, without you I am wicked. I am not seeing straight. What can I do? See? And then we are praying. We are reminding ourselves of this reality. And sometimes God, actually the Prophet Muhammad says, says uh, uh, tears that come out of mercy, they are actually so uh, sweet. Right? They, they bring us and suddenly we're like, I don't know, I just feel peaceful. Well, how do you feel peaceful? God the peace. God the peace made himself known again in you. The reason that that darkness came was to remind you that we need the light. So the darkness is even granted by God. Yes, out of mercy. Out of Feel 
finding of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is like if we, for example, in the worldly type of love, if you're separated from your loved one, whether your daughter or your spouse, or, you know, there is a joy when you find them. There is this joy, of yes, and it <coughs> makes you realize the depths of your love more hmm. than if you are all the time with them, you might not appreciate yes. it. So it's actually our even daily experience with each other, and, you know, but there is this joy of finding. So when you feel distance a little bit from the, your beloved Allah, it is even bland because the more you long and you search, then the greater the joy can become. And then we recognize again and again and again and again that faith is miraculous. And that's where I wanted to come. See, that coming back to God and surrendering changed our experience. It is miraculous. It's not lip service. It is, it is, a, it is a reality. It is something that is affecting my experience. See? See? So asking for forgiveness then here, if we want to connect it with the last two weeks, becomes I'm asking for forgiveness for perceiving the darkness. And I want to reconnect back. It is actually a reminder to reconnect. Like a, uh, uh, there is a bust and qabd. So qabd is a constriction. So meaning that you feel this gloominess. At that time, the Prophet Peter would say, say astaghfirullah. It means remember again that there is perfection. Come back to God. When there is bust, which is, uh, how can we, expansion. expansion, it means I am feeling already the light everywhere. It is a time for Alhamdulillah. It is a time to increase our praise because this light that we are, it's not taking, we sometimes take it for granted. No, it's not to be taken for granted. It is the light of the Creator that is shining through my heart and changing my experience. In, in life. So, clearing the negativity, inner peace becomes our experience. With which tools? With the tool of Subhanallah, God is void of any darkness. With the tool of Bismillah, in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. With the tool of Astaghfirullah, God, I seek forgiveness and I reconnect to you. So it is, it seems like complicated maybe because it's my perception is complicated but it is really we are going to the basics the problem is we forget the basics I am here showing three most basic uh, phrases most basic phrases but we don't know sometimes how miraculous these phrases are these phrases are there to change our experience yes brother Tan. so that's so that's why you have to pray five times a day because you got all that stuff in it. Subhanallah. Um, <laughs> so you have heart problems, you have to do exercise, and that's the five prayers. So you're doing the exercise. You're, you're doing the exercises. Yes. There was a preacher on the, the radio. He, he said, you know, a guy comes into the doctor. He, he just had a heart attack. And he says, doctor, I want to be healthy. I want to be healthy. He says, okay, I'll help you be healthy. Oh, great, great, great. So how, how do I do it? He says, get on the treadmill and run. No, 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 I want to be healthy. You need to help me be healthy, and then I'll do this. It doesn't happen like that. You have to do the exercises first, and then you get the, the, the clearing of the heart. Right? Yes. So that's the same thing. So Tar, I, I, I want to say something, actually. Sometimes they say it is a sign. It is a sign of the grace of God. If someone knows something beforehand, because my next slide talks about daily prayers. <laughs> and you just talk about the prayers. So, so Alhamdulillah, this is a, a sign to thank God that he, he is reminding us of his grace every moment. That the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he says, Tell me, if there were a stream at the door of one of you, in which he takes a bath five times a day, would any filth remain upon his body? They replied, no dirt would remain. He said, peace be upon him, Similar is that case of the five daily prayers. God obliterates all sins as a result of performing them. 
And that's exactly what you just told us. Because what we are doing, we are doing a communion with the lights. We are saying, you know, I am distracted, I see darkness, I see, and I say, no, God, you are the great. Everything thanks to you. You are void of all darkness. Help me see that. I'm asking for forgiveness. We are reconnecting. We are reconnecting back again. We're taking away all the all the illusions out of it. If we do this practice, we pray that maybe inshallah we'll have more light in our lives and less darkness. So we need the prayers, not the prayers need us. Sometimes we feel as if you know I have to pray. Why do I have to pray? This is so big of a burden. But when we realize actually that the prayers are not a burden, but the prayer is the key to happiness in life, then we run to the prayer. As the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him will say, Arihna biha, ya Bilal. Bilal, please, he used to do the, the azan, the call to prayer, give us uh, raha, um, relief, buy it. We need the relief. We need to pray. We need to come back to our Creator. So thank you, uh, Tark, for reminding us of, of this because it well, contains all of these, uh, uh, all of it. We're in a condensed version. Uh, and we can, inshallah. Uh, I assume we are pushing to the end of the workshop. Yes, the, inshallah. Of the workshop, but I appreciate your experience with my brothers and sisters that uh, uh, one should uh, try to really, uh, to really, uh, Feel inception from perceptions because, in fact, you know, there can be life without trial. Or without trial? Yeah. Yes. Or problems. So, if one is playing to be safe from trial, and then the, the next thing over is to get more power because then life will not get any sense for you. If you think about it, you know, if you wake up in the morning, you start eating from whatever the time you wake up until you go back to bed, you know, what sense it will make to you. It becomes, you get a sense and a taste when you can see the difference between not eating and eating. Mm -hmm. So therefore, both goes together. Mm -hmm. so both are to remind us of the compassionate, the compassionate creator. Of Thank you. The, 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 other, the other facts of life, you know, and the experience that we have to remember is that once we cannot solve everything or nothing by ourselves. We have to always go back to, you know, to the compassion. To the compassion. So we have problem and serious problem, anxiety, such, such you know, when we're trying to solve, you know, the, the problem that we are facing. Exactly. So culturally, what we do culturally, like I, I know this in the many cultures uh, uh, that have. Uh, uh, we say we see somebody angry. We say, say Bismillah, say Bismillah. Let's sit and talk. Why we are saying actually say Bismillah? We are saying it culturally, but it's coming from a very truthful reality. Say Bismillah and let's talk. Just say Bismillah, Bismillah. First, don't, uh, so what are we trying to say here? If we are aware of it, now it became part of the culture, but it's actually full of truth. Remember now, God is the compassionate. Now let's talk about the issue. So see, see it's, it can it can take it, but 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 well, so we are reminding ourselves that everything is happening out of the compassionate Creator. I want and to say, finish my comment. With oh, story, sorry. One of the stories that I really love to remind myself it is that you know, sister, uh, a very girl, a sister that who went to the who committed adultery and become pregnant and went to the prophet to be punished. And one might say, you know, how stupid can she be? You know, you hide this, you know, put it in the world and finish. But she was a very smart woman. So she went to, I said, you do this, you go and give birth, and then you come back to me. Then I give you the permission. He said, if I come back and you're not there, he said, go to Abu, uh, Abu Bakr. If Abu Bakr is not there, what should I do? But you can see by answering the question, she wanted to be punished here. Finish with it because she knows that you know when you wish the punishment can be ten times more severe than what she can do. She wants to free herself because she knows by herself there's nothing she can do. And it is a way for her to go back to the compassion of his of her creator and free herself from that you know.
Thank you. May God help us to see him as the compassionate, inshallah. Maybe we can add, end here. Uh, Sister Jean, would you like to uh, make a prayer? Yes. <clears throat> Allah, we thank you for giving us this time to share our faith. Thank you for this wonderful room of believers. Help us through Brother Omar and the light that you have given him to increase our faith. And help us all when we pray and surrender to you to be meaningful in our prayers. Help us to be focused in our prayers. And if we do our prayers without that, help us to start over. Help us to take the practical steps that Brother Omar has given us to just be more connected to you and to feel your presence. Help us to realize that we don't need many of the things we think we need, but we really just need you more and more. Amen. Thank you.